very, very dangerous. Most had confidence in heading into camp was offensive personnel in general. The greatest loss was a big play running back, Reggie Taylor, twice rushed for over 1,000 yards as an Eskimo. Canadian slot back Marco Sincar and Jordan Gartner retired too, but Taylor's talent would be difficult to replace. Owning many of the CFL's premier Canadian backfielders gave probability to an all-Canadian running game led by Mike Soles and fullback Blake Marshall, Brian Walling and Chris Johnstone. But offensive coordinator Bill Dietrich expressed a need for an import tailback at the conclusion of training camp. We would definitely like to keep an import, and, and what we were looking when we uh, made a move to replace it, Reggie was to get someone that could give us the same things in the running game, but maybe help us a little bit more as a pass receiver and, and maybe use as a, a slot back at time to time and uh, leave our options open that way. And the guys would be? Well, of course, Mike Pringle and uh, Blake Ezor. Proven backfield commodities include, of course, number 22, Blake Marshall, all CFL, the CFL's most valuable Canadian, Eskimo's most valuable player, and holder of the Eskimos and CFL's records for most touchdowns in a season with 20. Marshall's 53 career touchdowns in 70 games reflects his value. An old-time smash-mouth north-south runner of the 230-pound variety. Caught 50 passes to go with the 615 rushing yards in 91. Running back Mike Soule's performance calls for more playing time in 1992. Deceptive and rugged, has averaged over seven yards per carry over his three-year professional career. Also had 17 special teams tackles last season, fourth on the team. A guy who simply has to see the ball more this time around. You know, obviously Blake Marshall is at the top of his game right now and, you know, tops in the league. So, uh, you know, we're starting off right at the top, you, you know, it's... And we got some guys behind him, myself and Chris Johnstone and uh, Brian Walling. And, you know, we've all played some downs in, in this league and all, you know, had a certain degree of success. So uh, I think we do have a pretty good uh, Canadian content as for the running back position, for sure. Mike's uh, um, always had great hands. Uh, when he came in, in uh, and joined with the Eskimos, he had great hands. And I think o over the years he's uh, improved in his blocking ability. And um, he's always got that, that good burst. Um, you know, he's, he broke a couple long ones last year for about 40 or 50 yards. Um, so, you know, right now he's penciled in as the, the starting uh, tailback, and uh, we're all going to get a good look. And, um, you know, it's all going to depend on how consistent we all are. Eskimo receivers didn't really impress in preseason. That caused concern. After all, Craig Ellis has been one of the league's premier slot backs since joining the Green and Gold four years ago, has caught over 100 passes twice in a season. Jim Sandusky had a great return season last year after two seasons with the Seahawks in Seattle of the NFL. Had his fourth career 1,000-yard campaign as a game-breaking wide receiver in this league. Was named to the All-CFL team last year. He and Ellis are proven. This was the year Henry Williams was listed as a number one wide receiver at training camp till a minor injury slowed him up a lot. Eskimos still want the Giz to emerge as a dependable receiver to utilize his 4.2640 speed more in their offensive scheme. Working to improve always is the Giz. Uh, basically what you do is uh, I try not to lift too many weights and try not to have like real stone hands, heavy hands. Try to keep it as light as you can. I have a, a lot of clay that I squeeze a lot. Try to make my hands real strong and relax a lot. And that's one of the basic things. And, and most important thing is concentrate on the ball a lot. Try to catch a lot of balls every day and, you know, stay consistent uh, with the speed I have running like a 10-yard out or a 12-yard curve was hard for me trying to open up and stop at the same time. Now I've learned how to relax myself more and, and uh, take a lot of pressure off myself. Eskimos were all but void of Canadian receivers at preseason's end. Sixteen receivers, 14 of them imports, went into training camp. Slot back Chris Armstrong was counted on to continue his explosive tendencies discovered last season. Gained almost 25 yards every time he caught the football. With the four receivers that we have now, we can all play either slot or wide receiver. So that makes it easy for us to do a lot of different things in the offense. As far as being game breakers, uh, you know, Jim Sandusky at any time can turn a game around. So can Craig Ellis. And of course, we all know how, what kind of a superstar Gizmo is. So me, I'm just trying to, you know, come in and be the young guy and accept my role. And if I get a chance to break the game open, I want to be able to step up and do so. How do things rub off to you from guys like that? The things that rub off uh, for me, you know, from those guys to me is the fact that I don't really let myself get down. If um, something happens and I make a mistake, having those guys around, I know that it's going to be okay if I just keep my head up and could keep going, keep going forward and let that mistake go. Um, just the, the desire to want to be a winner, that's what I get from them the most. And little help hints that they give me, you know, the defensive alignments and things like that. It's just great to have those guys on my team.
Canadian import numbers would dictate how many receivers would make it here. Rookie Walter Brooks from San Jose State opened a few eyes during camp as a wide receiver. Right now, I'm, I'm very pleased and impressed with, uh, with Walter. Uh, the one thing that he's done, he's caught the ball consistently in every practice, uh, every situation that we put him in. Uh, you know, and that's kind of the name of the game. If you can get open and you can catch the ball, well, I mean, you're going to be around. Former League Most Valuable player Tracy Ham enters into his sixth season with the Eskimos, led the team to a record 482 first downs in 1991, and threw at least 30 touchdown passes for a third straight season. Also rushed for just under 1,000 yards. You know, each year you try to work on getting rid of the ball quicker, and um, which in allows the offensive line to... Uh, 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 you know, to feel more comfortable with what you're doing and knowing that if they give me uh, a few seconds that I'll get rid of the ball. And, and also, if I'm getting rid of the ball quickly, I'm reading the defenses. So I, um, you know, I just um, you know, want to get back, make my reads, throw the ball on time, uh, move the pocket to help the offensive line out. You know, don't sit in one spot because uh, it really helps the whole offensive unit out if I'm moving, uh, moving around back there and, and giving them different looks. Don't forget Ham's badly injured throwing arm in the Western Final played into the Eskimos' last-minute loss to Calgary in November. Well, you know, uh, injuries, you're going to get injuries in football games, and uh, that was a serious one. You know, it was kind of a separation, and a quarterback separates his right shoulder. It makes it pretty difficult to throw. Uh, he's fully healed from that. I think he's looking forward to a big season. Uh, I know we'd like to see him have one. We think that... Uh, Tracy Ham's a lot better quarterback than a lot of people have given him the credit to be. As far as from a coaching standpoint, Bill and I have been, uh, especially Bill and I have been very impressed with his work habits this year. He, uh, he came into camp ready to go. Now, whether that's familiarity with the offense, we hope it is, uh, that he came into camp wanting to, to go out and get things done. And, and I think he's looking forward to having a big year, and I, and I, don't, I don't see anything stopping him from having it. Got to be innovative in the CFL. One of Ham's great talents is improvisation. A fine scrambler and passer who runs a multitude of playbook variations, from full house backfields to schemes of five or six receivers. Insists Calgary stole their highly effective six-pack from the Eskimos. But regardless of who used it first, I think that is just something that you will make teams prepare for uh, during the week, and they'll be able to spend less time on what you actually use for your core of your offense, but they have to practice for that um, because it's a bona fide uh, offensive scheme that um, people use nowadays and, and it creates um, difficult situations for teams. So, you know, I think you'll see some of that from us. Um, you'll, see, uh, you'll see a lot of different formations from us. Um, I think we'll be trying to create a situation where it gives us an offensive advantage. The chief backup, Tom Mickey. <laughs> Well, I think Tom is an experienced guy. He's been in the league for quite some time, and he understands the game. And um, I think that's a, a help in itself when you can have someone who um, has experience that can see what you see and that uh, will allow you to um, come to the sideline and you can talk with him about um, what's going on on the field. And he actually understands what uh, I'm seeing, and he sees some of the same things I see. With Tom, we've, we've really got an outstanding uh a, a good solid backup and I think the the thing that Tom's adds to us is the things off the field you know uh, and, and really able to help Tracy and uh, and that has really been a plus up front a largely veteran group of linemen though 10-year tackle Trevor Bowles was lost until September to injury if I'm coming straight up field your eyes are focused on that it's great if I come up field one step give you all kinds of head moves and go inside this really hasn't changed has it so the smaller target that you can take on this guy on pass, the better off you're going to be in following it. All-Canadian center Rod Connop enters his 10th year in the Eskimos. Guard Randy Ambrosi, his 8th season. Guard Pierre Virtual, his 5th campaign. Tackle Blake Dermott begins his 10th year on the Eskimo line. The injury to Balls rushed rookie first-round pick Chris Morris into a starter's role. He's a talent like we haven't got here in a, in, in a couple of years, somebody that the coaching staff feels can step right in and start. I don't think, I think the last time we had somebody like that was Pierre Virchfeld, and that would have been 1988. You know, players that, uh, especially in the offensive line position, that come along and can start in their rookie years uh, are very, very tough to find. Uh, it usually takes a couple of years before, for uh, offensive linemen sort of develop into that, that role. New offensive line coach Bill McDermott, ex-Argo and small college coach, draws rave reviews for his handling of a primarily veteran crowd of offensive linemen. Gaining respect from so many old-timers is no easy job. Well, you look for small things to help them. A little bit on their stance, a little bit on their get-off. 
a uh, little bit on their hand placement, a little bit on their body position. And again, it's not a, it's, it's certainly not a uh, coaching from square one. Uh, it's, it's refining the skills that they already have. And as I say, hoping that you give them one thing that make them play a little bit better than they have before. All right, this is just a walk through drill on your steps. Here we go. First sound, walk, drop, come on in, good, that's it. Now, when you come off that way, Steve, focus in this way because there's going to be a linebacker there, okay? All right, now we're like this. Chris, you're going to slant inside now so we can get that read off of our first step. Now, one step, walk through. Here we go. First sound. Here we go. Walk, drop, step, come on up. That's it. And now... Uh, I thought I reached a point in my career where where there wasn't a whole lot more that I could be taught as far as technique and stuff. You know, I thought that uh, having had three offensive line coaches in the past and, 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 and good ones that, that, uh, that we sort of been showed all that there was to, to be showed about playing this position. But, but Coach McDermott has, has, uh, has brought some new ideas to us that, uh, that have really helped because the last couple of years, maybe because we were a, a very veteran group, we didn't have as much emphasis placed on, on, on uh, technique. It was more on assignments and knowing who to block and when to block them. And, but uh, Coach McDermott is, is really emphasizing the, the technique bit, and it's something that we may have gotten away from the last few years. Eskimos gave up 51 quarterback sacks last season, second most in the league. Much of that due to Ham's scrambling style. Tracy's a kind of quarterback that has to move out there. I mean, uh, uh, he's always been a runner, and I think that's, that's when he does his best, when he runs around and makes things happen. Uh, of course, sometimes it's not always easy because we're not sure where he's going to be, but... Uh, most of the time, you know, good things happen, and that's that's the way it should be. You know, we we know what everybody's going to do in certain situations, and it really helped on the O line. I mean, I mean, to have a successful O line, all five guys have to know, you know, what what the guys beside each other are going to do. In general, an offense with proven ability to be super again. Coming up, defense and special teams. Set. When calling this a transition year for the Edmonton Eskimos, and of course there is always a certain amount of transition or change in any football organization, defense is undergoing much of that. To begin, in the secondary, where the corner position ranks among the greatest responsibilities in CFL defense, Eskimos went into camp after a season of defensive backfield turmoil. Twelve different people played back there through the 18-game schedule. Bad for continuity, but good for evaluating a lot of players under fire, and good in that many young secondary backs received vital game experience. Eskimos defensive coordinator Rich Stubler intended to benefit by drawing from the cream of that crowd, released Roy Bennett and Reggie Mathis, but a broken leg in the Saskatchewan game to safety David Shelton and a severe Charlie horse to corner Doug Parrish forced unexpected personnel decisions. Rookie imports Nigel Pendleton, Damian Lyons, and Travis Oliver saw their stock rise at least temporarily. Safeties Dan Murphy and Trent Brown are the Canadians of the group. Enos Jackson, all-west defensive back in his fourth Eskimo season, is the undisputed leader in the secondary. Loves being part of the Eskimos' defensive personality, as designed by Rich Stubler. We've always been a blitzing team ever since 89, and uh, Coach Stubler is no different. We're going to be a man-to-man -man blitzing team. We'll play some zones just based on situation, but we're, we're the type of team who's going to go out after you the quarterback all the time so that's going to put the uh, defensive backs on the aisle and that's what we like to play a bunch of great athletes uh, have a lot of great desire and are really smart kids back there and, and we play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage like everybody knows these guys have the ability to run with people they know their coverages and they're, they're a extremely a proud bunch of guys that do a nice job so they're they're fine back there they'll they'll be super and we'll try to get the heat up front and they'll they'll, they'll do the uh, cover end corner eddie thomas an all-star as a rookie in 91 played 16 games was third in eskimo tackles led the team in fumble recoveries and had seven interceptions also a team high 1989 Eastern Rookie of the Year, Stephen Jordan, got into just two games last season at defensive back. Despite injuries, the team was third in interceptions, but gave up the third most pass yardage in the league. Thrown at a lot. Eskimo coaches are praying for some kind of continuity of talent in the secondary. Set, hike, hike. Go, go, get out of here. Clear, go technique. Hike, hike. Come on, a baby, get out of here. Set, hike, hike. All right, here we go. Mike Nelson is the Eskimos defensive line coach this campaign, part of the transition in Lancaster's coaching staff, one of three new assistants. Chris, it'll be on you, try to get hands on him. Roy, give him a shot, we slow him down. Here we go. Up in the gap, we got to penetrate the gap. Is it Benny's got to twist? Anytime, Chris, after set. Set! Hike! 
Hike. Go, 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 and penetrate, guys. Keep the feet driving. Don't stop your feet. Keep your pad level down. Here we go. I'm Chris. Set. Hike, hike, hike. Low. Nice and low. Only stay low. Nelson worked here seven years ago for Pete Catella and Jackie Parker. Coached defensive line at Stanford. Also coached at Kansas State, Missouri, San Diego State, and Wisconsin. Much more of a chance to build creative defense in Canada, like the Eskimos. Multiple look, front seven. Well, it's a 30 front, but it's really a multiple. And I know that's sort of the uh, the word of the, de uh, the era, d this day and age, you know, is that we're a multiple defense. And we, we line up in all kinds of things. We can bring all kinds of linebackers in any combination and defensive backs. So we're basically a 30 front, but we'll do everything out of the 30 front. You can do out of a 40 front, out of any other front. Eskimos defense overall gave up the fourth fewest touchdown passes and third fewest rushing touchdowns in the CFL last year. Led the league in quarterback sacks with 54, though now former stars Toaster Williams, Danny Bass, and Mike Walker accounted for 21 of the sacks. We were second by 30 yards in total defense, you know, which people kind of overlook. Uh, you know, Winnipeg beat us by 30 yards, which I thought was, and they had a totally veteran group, and we had, what, eight guys turnover, plus 12 injuries in the secondary. So we were pleased with what happened. Uh, I think this year with the absorption of what the defense is and everybody's familiarity with it and us being more familiar with the players to be able to implement some things which are good for them. I think we'll be better. Don't expect a lot of tackles or sacks from nine-year nose tackle Michelle Bourgeau. The 275-pounder's role is considerably different at nose than elsewhere on the line, often drawing a double team in the center war zone. My situation, the run plays basically on the run situations, I do take up uh, one or two blockers to keep uh, the linebacker free and allow him to make the tackle. On pass, I uh, have my area of responsibility, pass rush lanes, and I keep that as best I can and try to forge pressure up the middle. Um, there's always a lot of guys who have a lot of quickness and speed, like Dwayne Odom, Jed Roberts, uh, Benny Goods, uh, Leroy Blue have come off the, end, the uh, corners of the defense to really put the pressure on. But I have to be there in the middle to make sure that the pocket collapses from the cent uh, center as well. Canadian defensive lineman Rob Davidson appears close to coming into his own, and non-import and Jed Roberts is highly regarded by the coaches. Proved tenaciousness by leading the team in special teams tackles last year. Last year I came in, I was a uh, dark horse because nobody knew who I was, and I was penciled in fourth string, and there were only three strings last year, so I, I made the team on special teams. So this year it's a pleasant change because uh, I don't have to worry about Am I going to get any reps today, or am I going to get any action in the game? I mean, I know I am, and I know what I have to do to uh, succeed. Defensive end Benny Goods came into camp some 30 pounds over his advertised playing weight of 255, so the club pounced on ex-Ottawa three-time Eastern All-Star Lloyd Lewis when he became available. The 265-pound Texan has been a defensive tackle most of his career. In 1991, the Eskimos led the league in fewest rushing yards allowed. Statistically, opponents chose to pass against Edmonton more and run less. The green and gold's linebacking unit will be anchored inside by Willie Pless and Larry Ruck. Pless was third of the CFL with 112 tackles last year, was All-Canadian, also had eight sacks. It'll be year seven for the Terminator, working hard to make this season his best one. Well, I think uh, my endurance is one of the, the main factors that, that will definitely be an asset. Uh, I think working out with the gears, we did a lot of uh, speed work for sure, and also we did a lot of endurance work. So I think in the long run, I would be in better shape physically to uh, handle an uh, 18-game season. Plus has nine-year Eskimo Larry Ruck working alongside in the middle. Ruck's first middle linebacking duty since junior at Saskatoon. And now, emphasis on leadership since Danny Bass retirement. Uh, I guess I've, I've always believed in sort of leading through example. I'm not a real vocal guy, but um, I think the best way to do it is just to, to go out and show the young guys, uh, you know, good work ethics and uh, a good positive attitude and just sort of let it rub off. Uh, Larry's been done, has done well there. You know, the Mac linebacker is our call linebacker, which uh, is a little different than a lot of defensive schemes. We have to have a guy who knows what's going on more than, you know, pure raw physical talent. Uh, Larry knows how to play the game. He knows what his limitations are, which helps us as a Mac linebacker. Being of the one-eyed variety is great for notoriety, too. Being legally blind in one eye has not yet been a detriment to Larry's career. It apparently affects him even less at inside linebacker. Canadian Leroy Blue should be entering his peak years at rush linebacker and import outside linebacker Dwayne Odom. Former California Golden Bear, very mobile big man at 6'3", 235, was a projected starter. Learned a lot about the Eskimo system behind the scenes late last season. I go into meetings and everything, and, I'm, and I pay attention a lot. I mean, that's the main thing. It's just to learn as much as I can and read the playbook as much as I can. 
and, and just feed off the veterans. Those are probably the, the biggest assets are, are the veterans because they've been around a while. They know the ins and outs, and, you know, they help me along a lot. Well, you know, Leroy, you know, he's been around, and, you know, he tells me little things about the offensive line and stuff I can use on my pass rushes and stuff. And, you know, Larry and, uh, and Willie, you know, in our pass drops, you know, they kind of tell me, you know, you know where, where I should be and what I should look for and stuff like that. Young, fast, smart, and coachable. So what about this front seven personnel witnessed through preseason? They're obviously as good as I thought they were, and even a little bit better. For example, Leroy Blue on film looks really quick, but doesn't look that big. Then you see him live. I mean, he's a load. He's a big guy. Uh, new guys coming in. Lloyd Lewis came in from Ottawa. Extremely hard worker. A bull is what we nicknamed him. Just a big slugger guy and a good football player. Randy Thornton came in from the new league, and uh, uh, he's doing the World League of American Football. He's doing a nice job for us. He adds a little bit of quickness. And then Jed Roberts I saw on film a year ago, but not a bunch. And he's done a nice job, and he's our starting cue right now. Our kids are a lot more comfortable with what they're doing right now, so that we're able to put in a lot more different looks. Uh, not so much more def defense, but different looks right. that people are going to have to adjust to. You know, we won't show that until the season. I think we're basically taking uh, the defense we had last year, the defensive scheme, and fine-tuning it to a point where we're going to keep the offensive uh, units guessing all the time. Uh, we are, we're delaying a lot of our, our, our stunts. We're, we're mixing them up. Uh, we're learning to work with each other, and we have one year of, uh, of uh, test period for that defense. So right now we're fine-tuning what we did last year, and I think it's going to be a lot very difficult for the offenses to keep us from getting the quarterback. We can stay healthy, and uh, you know we, can def we definitely have some ball players in the front seven. And I think uh, it's going to be a long, good season for us, and we can just stay healthy and just you know play within ourselves. Out on a limb, Jed Roberts said he felt this could be one of the best and quickest defenses the Eskimos have had. Coming up, special teams. concern for Eskimos heading into this camp was in areas of special teams, net punt yardage specifically. Son of former Eskimo great Roger Nelson, Mark Nelson, was signed up to coach all aspects of special team. First of all, we're going to get the punt off. And then second, we're going to cover it. And then we'll worry about the net yardage. Now, we have to increase our net yardage. Last year it was 28 yards. And, and our punters, you know, we're going to have to get the ball off and a little bit farther. Um, the guys have done so far a good job this year uh, covering, and hopefully we'll uh, do that all year long. Eskimo's first Canadian draft pick this time was kicker Sean Fleming, a University of Wyoming product by way of Burnaby, B.C. He and returning Ray Macaridi were given the competition with off-season releases of Glenn Harper and Dean Dorsey. Macaridi kicked 47 converts and 23 field goals before going back to school last fall. Then there's the Giz, Henry Williams, who scored five touchdowns on punt returns in 1991, one of five league records he set last year. We was one of the strongest return team in the league, but what we had problems was when people, uh, we kicked off to a lot of people, we gave up too many yards. But I think uh, we brought in a great coach this year, going to do a great job for us. And uh, basically, you know, uh, we can uh, hold, a, hold a lot of people down this year. As a special team coach, I want the ball in his hand as much as possible because he is a great one and he makes things happen. And they're, you know, positive. And so, uh, no, we will try to, you know, get the ball into his hands as, as much as possible. We have uh, other people like Eddie Thomas, Parrish. Uh, um, uh, our new running back returns punts and stuff, so, you know, and kickoffs. So, I mean, you know, we, we, we're we going to have a, a lot of weapons to choose from. The biggest thing people don't remember is they have to have a lot of courage. I mean, to run full speed at somebody and then get ready to make your break. And Giz has that. So, he, you know, he is a very brave young man. He's a great return guy. And uh, it'll be a, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a delight coaching him this year because I'm not going to coach him. I'm just going to ball, you know, Giz, catch the ball and run. <laughs> Will the Eskimos be laughing in November? Based on two preseason games, many observers are apprehensive in predicting a playoff spot, let alone a Western title. But others see it more optimistically. After all, this is the Eskimos. A tough division and several player changes here make this a premium coaching challenge for the little general and his chiefs of staff.